The other day I had a neighbor bring this in. Uh, he wa he saw my conversions on my clutch mini mill and he's having issues with this. He says it has no power. It does have the uh, little machine shop conversion. It no longer has the gears inside. He doesn't want to pay for the full conversion. So I said, bring it by and I'll see if I can f fit our motor to this for considerably less. So I decided I was going to run some tests. So I blacked out the spindle and set it up so I could run a speed test. I wanted to know what it would do. And its slowest speed is 785 RPMs. I can stop it. It's got a neat little safety feature where it turns it off and on so it doesn't smoke the motor, but there's no power. Uh, then I decided to run it up and see what the highest speed it'll run is. And to my surprise, it looks like it'll turn 4,600 RPM. That's really fast. Now I know where these people are coming up with these super high RPMs on these little milling machines. I'm going to show you some other machines. This is the mailing machine I use. It'll run 240. You can't stop it. It's confirmed. Top speed it will run is 2400. It's confirmed. I don't know why you need to run it faster. I sure don't. Then we got this one, and this is not all together because I'm building one for somebody. It's almost done, but this is our main mill conversion. It's got a one horsepower motor on it. It will run as slow as 112 RPMs. You cannot stop it at that speed. It will run... Because the motor ground, the green wire goes through to the back box, we're just going to take the whole thing off as an assembly and set it aside. That way if the owner wants to put it back on, he can. Surprisingly, the owner of this machine left the gears in. He just put them in the neutral position. They're still in there. You don't want those gears in there. I guess, I guess that'll work. I'm not gonna fix it for them. That's a lot of work to take that out. The Allen set screw in here uses a 564th Allen, which is a US size. Metrics don't fit it, which means these parts are made in the, this little adapter kit is made in the USA. So we lifted up the uh, spindle drive pulley. Nicely machined part. Spin a lock matches the old style lock. Took faceplate off of one of our motors. That's a 750, which is what we're going to fit to that. And we're going to see how it fits to the faceplate, the little machine shop faceplate. And main concern is these cutouts for the other motor. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure it out by gluing this here. So we're just going to take a little bit of hot glue and we're going to just kind of stick it around. Doesn't have to be real good because we're going to pop it off. We're going to center this on the other circle and set it down as close as we can. Like that. And we're going to turn this over. We glue this to this, centering that. Glued it with hot glue. And then from the back side, we use the one inch drill bit. This is centered real nice. We drilled one eight holes. Now we're going to drill the holes larger to fit one of our face mount motors. These are M6 screws. So these holes have to fit M6 screws. This is one of the one horsepower motors that we sell. You can get it with either this or a face flush mount screw. We're going to see what fits. 
This is what the motor is going to come like on the shaft. We just cut this off with a hacksaw and then we ground it smooth. This is the original pulley. We want to go one to one. So we're going to have to make the pulley go on. It's going to have to be larger than that and go on afterwards. If you buy our one horsepower motor with the face mount version and the M6 screws, the right size drill bit is 1364. You're not going to have this face plate, so you're not going to be able to do the 1 8 that we did. You're going to have to go straight to the 1364. Which means be real careful here, because if you tear up all the threads in here, then you're going to have to start over with a new motor, a larger thread, a helicoil insert. I actually would suggest that you just just put the nipples in don't drill the bit all the way through the hole all the way through just put nipples like this where the screws are going to be and then set this on a drill press so that it's square and drill these out i was able to drill these out quite accurately uh they're all They're drilled out at 1564, but there was a slight miss, so one of these holes I had to drill out a quarter inch so that it would line up with the motor. Now we're going to screw this to the motor, making sure the wires go off to the side, which is near that. And we're going to see these old, these are the old bolt holes. We're going to turn this around. It's reversible, so it's not going to make any difference. And I'm going to use these screws instead. They've already been tried, as you can tell. So I run these screws in. They clear everything. They clear the belt. I don't have to cut the bevels. And it leaves more steel in the plate so the plate stays stronger. Like that. Notice the wires are coming out by this pivot here. This is the pulley that's going to come off of your little machine shop adapter and it looks totally usable to fit to this motor, the new motor. Just cut this portion off so it's smooth flat across here. Cut this portion off so it's smooth flat across here. Then bore this out to 15 millimeters like this, the 5 millimeter key and you should be ready to go. I would have done that with this one, but this still belongs to the customer whose machine it is, because the deal was, if he doesn't like the conversion, I'm going to put all his old parts back, and he can have his machine back without paying me any money. Otherwise, if he likes the conversion, he has to pay me for it. So I have to keep all the old parts. I made these two to replace this one. One is for a sample, and one is going to go on to the machine. I would rather use this one. This one's two and a half, same size as the pulley on the spindle. So it'd be a one-to-one -one ratio. That would give me an RPM speed range on the spindle of anywhere from about 100 RPMs to 4,500 RPMs. He doesn't have time to wait. This is going to take a longer belt. The original one uses a 13-inch belt. It's going to take a 14 inch belt to fit this. It's still experimental until I put it on and test it. And I won't have a machine to test it with. So if you want this pulley and the matching belt, go look it up on servomotorkit.com and you'll be able to buy it. But it'll be experimental. So it's going to be trial and error. It's also going to take at least five days before I ship it because I'm going to make another one before I ship it. This is the only one I have. Same goes if you buy one of these. It's going to be five days before I ship it because I have to make another one because I have to retain a sample until I have a machine as a demo. So set those aside and we're going to put this one on. Set screws. This actually fits in this cutout on a little machine shop bracket. It's pretty close too so it'll really keep the inside of that area clean. 
Uh, you want the fit to be tight. Otherwise, the set screws aren't going to work well. And this is going to go in there, making it hard to pull off without damaging it. So I'm going to put it on a bit at a time and go test it. I will use, of course, a socket and drive it on this way. Oh, see that? Just about right. So it's flush with the key. I'm going to go try it. So I achieved perfect alignment with the belt with this resting in the holder. Set screws are still accessible. So we'll tighten the set screws up. Notice it's not perfect centered but that's not going to affect anything because it's adjustable also it runs clear but it's set inside there pretty far tighten the set screws nice and tight not too tight that you grunge the thread I just screwed it down tighten the belt with the original tensioners this is the drive on the side Speed control I just stuck on the side here with some two-sided tape. I only use one piece because the owner's going to want to take it off. Put a little light on underneath. And we turned it on. That's 4,500 on the motor. That's 300. This is fantastic. I decided to grab this at slow speed to see what the torque was. And I... Just burned my hand very quickly. I was not able to stop it. So, huge improvement on torque. Super quiet. Slow speed, spindle 200. I mean, motor 200, spindle 141. That sounds good. 4,500 on the motor. There's a false reading there. 3,488, that's a real reading. Now I really ought to wonder because, yeah, 348 looks good, but there is a 6,000 if I hold it there. I wonder if the original motor was giving me false reading. This is outstanding. I'm sure the customer's gonna be thrilled. I am so impressed with this that I imagine a lot of people are gonna buy just the motor for me and just this kit from the little machine shop and do the conversion I just showed you because it's going to be all well let's see this is 200 bucks that's 200 bucks so you're at 400 dollars actually it's the same result if you buy the tooth belt the tooth belt's better um but if you already have this from a little machine shop you can get there real easy just do this mod all you got to do is buy a motor. You don't have to throw away all that other equipment that you already bought. Uh, I'm sure it's going to cut really well, too. Don't forget, you now have reverse. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the way the machine normally runs. Hold this yellow button down until that little red dot comes on, and it will... Activate reverse. Now it runs backwards. That's going to be a nice feature that you didn't have before.